I took the original upload of this video down because many people misunderstood a particular thing I said. The God of the Bible is racist. Its actions in that ridiculous book proves this. I went on to say in so many words that by extension, anyone that worships this creature worships racism and is therefore racist. People took this to mean I was calling Theo Warner a racist. No, I was speaking euphemistically, not literally about Theo Warner or any other person that calls themselves a Christian. I do not believe Theo Warner is racist, not because as evolution states, race does not exist, but because I don't know the guy from Adam. I'd like to definitely apologize to Theo Warner if he thought this is what I was saying. That's it. On with the video. I was at Gambit Man's channel when I ran across a response video of his to this guy. You can see Gam's vid in the description box below as well as this person's. This guy is responding to a video featuring Neil deGrasse Tyson. He loves this video because Mr. Tyson admonishes atheists in it. Mr. Tyson also says that he is agnostic, not an atheist. As Bionic Dance would say, let's do this. I'm sure he's done something in science that's interesting. <laughs> you think he's done something interesting in science? What, you don't know? I like a lot of what he says. You really like what he says, huh? So it doesn't matter what a person is or who they are or what they say, as long as it's what you want to hear. I take it you're a moronic theist, which explains that. Let me ask you a question, fool. Does your God like what he says? Does your God like you appreciating what he says? And he posted this video where he talks about his status as an agnostic or an atheist. In fact, I really like a lot what he says because the first, ha first minute of this video is devoted to his argument about why labels get in the way of real conversation. And I've made this point so many times. You say labels get in the way of conversation, you ignorant hypocrite. Well, let's take a look at the title of your video. Stupid Atheist. No, your brain gets in the way of conversation. Are you a Christian or atheist is all you know? What about Muslims? What about our Christians? What about Hindus? If you don't like what the Christian label defines you as, then why don't you start every conversation by saying that is your title? And see how that transforms your crap into something crapless. In the back of your mind, you label atheists as stupid. Because they don't believe the trash you do. Why don't we? Many reasons. One of them, look what your belief has turned you into. Blind, deaf, and dumb hypocrite. A dishonest lump of trash that speaks sweet garbage while plotting atheist downfall. Yeah, we're stupid, remember? Your dishonest ass is giving you the label Christian. Don't want it? Then why don't you simply label yourself as superstitious? A God believer. Oh, that's right. You are to evangelize. How do you do that without telling people what you are or what you believe, Einstein Jr.? You don't like labels or titles now, idiot. That means you don't like language. That means you don't like communication. That means you should rip out your voice box so you won't have to be burdened with any of it. What is your God labels you? Me. What are its titles for us? What does your God say you are to do to people with my label, my title? Answer that question truthfully and you will discover why you have been shackled by atheists with your well-earned label, Christian. And what exactly would your God think if it discovered you are ashamed and unwilling to admit you adhere to its depraved teachings? That you want to be released from beneath its immoral laws, you amoral sycophant. It also proceeds from profoundly false assumptions, like there's a distinction between Christian and atheist. Now, I mean, there is a distinction between Christian and atheist, but it's not an exclusive. It's not an exclusive set. There's, there's other options. What an ignoramus. What other options are there other than believer and non-believer? Other than a lover of fairy tales and a lover of reality? Tell us. Agnostic? That's the other option. Did Mr. Tyson say that he doesn't know if your God exists, but that he's a believer anyway? Did those words leave his lips? What options does your God give you, me or Tyson? Believe is everyone's only option, unless you wish to dispute that. Give it a shot. Read your holy book, then tell me what Tyson is, according to your God. Does your God like agnostics? Is there a special second heaven for them? Does your God accept their words about it as you have accepted Tyson's? Why do you accept what an agnostic has to say about your God against your God's moral commands? Are agnostics not to be put to death by you at your God's orders like the rest of us? Agnostics hold a special place in your heart, evidently, now that we know that. 
What special place do you now hold in your gods due to your love of agnostics? Tell me. I want to see the words leave your lips. Tell us all that agnostics are not atheists. I'm very reluctant to give any time to label the labels in general is that they tend also to serve as watchwords that steer people to, to treat you as friends and allies or enemies that need to be converted. See my video on DPR Jones' biblical literalism, and here's a video about how evangelistic atheists can be sometimes. Some people want to know, are you an atheist? I want to know so I can treat you like a reasonable, rational person, or so that I can shit on your beliefs. Evangelicals and atheists are the same. Each wants to know what the other is to label them to either shit on their beliefs or lack thereof, or convert the other. They want to know labels for that reason. You, of course, abhor labels, because you don't want to shit on someone else's beliefs or lack of. So which group of atheists lack of belief do you not want to shit on? The not stupid ones, of course. So tell us the distinction between a stupid atheist and a not stupid atheist. I love to hear this. I'm just dying to find out if you even know what an atheist is. Some people want to know, are you an atheist? I want to know so I can treat you like a reasonable, rational person, or so that I can shit on your beliefs. Well, we just discovered you don't know what an atheist is, and Tyson's apparently as ignorant as you. The second aspect of that video that, that really stuck, stuck out for me was this curiosity that Neil deGrasse Tyson expresses over the oddity that atheists exist at all. Uh, he makes this th the claim that he's not a golf player, but he doesn't gather with other people who are not golf players to discuss it. Tell you what, pal. When golf players start gathering and making prayer offerings to the golf god, and the golf god tells them to go out and convert people to playing golf, and if they don't murder them, Tyson will head up the gathering of non-golfers to oppose them. I have to say that in my life, the most authentically atheistic people I know almost never discuss atheism with me. In fact, when I ask them a question about atheism, they tend to just kind of say, I don't really care or no, it's not really something that's very important to me. They don't discuss it with you because in defiance of your God, you aren't attempting to evangelize and convert them. The next time you meet one of these atheists, tell them to read the Bible with you and to accept your Jesus so they will be tortured forever in your hell, you savage. Go ahead, see what happens. He doesn't gather with other people who are not golf players to discuss it. Apparently that's what an atheist is to you. Like-minded people gathering together to discuss your God. That makes you an atheist, idiot. But whereas your gatherings discuss the making of your version of Sharia law, the law of the land, how is this to stop you? You terrorist clowns stop uniting to destroy the United States Constitution. And we'll be happy to stop shoving that shit back up your asses. The people who are most vocally and outwardly atheistic also tend to be the people who spend the most amount of time that I know, short of fundamentalist, reading the Bible and studying religion and, and, and so on. And there's something a little bit, you know, she doth protest too much, built into the idea of atheist in general. Protest too much? This is our country, not your God's. Wasn't that the deal thanks to your Adam? Yeah? No? Then tell your God to fuck off. And what's the deal with this protest of a video of yours? If you believe atheists are so unworthy, why do you have a channel? Why do you feel the need to make such videos? To defend your crap against us? What is the purpose of your protest? Your insult? Who protests too much? Me? You're a comical farce. As a final criticism for atheism, I might just throw this in there as a final criticism for atheism. I'm really amazed by the number of people who call themselves atheists, but have never really seriously read the philosophies of the great prominent atheistic thinkers. You delved into those people and can't understand why atheists have it. You're still a theist, so they did nothing for you, did they? Time is short. We atheists don't waste it doing stuff we don't want to do. We don't waste it reading stuff that we don't need to help us not believe. What did reading all that stuff do for you? What? Help you to strengthen your defense against atheists? Is that why you read them? Your protestations are becoming monumental. All that for people that don't matter to you, huh? I'll let you in on a secret. I've never read a Hitchens book, never read Dawkins, haven't read any of those guys you mentioned. Why? Your books are probably boring. But I have bought a lot of their stuff. Why? To support the cause of destroying your psychotic belief system. That's it.
I know you theists read their popes, your ministers, your prophets, your preachers, your imams. You read their books and ingest their words without contemplation. Your God has taught you to obey authority. They've taught you to obey authority. To follow your God's commandments blindly. To do as told regardless of the edict. You would obey your God no matter how heinous the atrocity. You were just following orders like a good Nazi. That is your job. Not the job of the atheist. Not the job of the secular humanist. We don't swallow what anyone has to say unless what they say has logic, reason, science, and or ethics to back it. We have no more regard for Dawkins or Hitchens' words as we have for yours. The only difference is you advocate superstition, magic, witches, torture. If you can prove your God exists, that it should be followed, and all this moronic, asinine, immoral crap should be followed, then... I'll buy your book. So you are labeled a psychotic savage by atheists. A well-deserved label. You watch something by Bionic Dance and all. Oh, we don't, nobody, we don't need that at all. We don't need that. We don't need what upsets you, huh? Let's see what doesn't upset you. Millions of men, women, and children drown to death at the capricious whim of your God. Murdering and slicing open pregnant women thus aborting their fetuses, scapegoating an innocent man and torturing and murdering him, your Jesus, for your own guilty ass. You need this and more, yet you disprove of the label any human creature or Christian. Too bad, boy. Christians murder abortion doctors, want to force rape victims to give birth to the rapist child, want to force their insanity into American public schools, corrupting the Constitution and destroying this government. You are Christian. That makes you a domestic threat to national security. Bionic Dance is doing her civic duty. Your contempt of her only reveals your anti-American fervor. She's obnoxious. Let's see, you've called people illiterate, uninformed, and curious. <laughs> From you, wow. Lacking substance, embarrassing, ignorant, stupid. Bionic Dance may be obnoxious. You, as your religion tells you to be, are simply hateful, xenophobic, racist, intolerant garbage. You have the gumption to say what a bionic dance has to say is bad to your ears. Have you read your religious book? Is nothing in that bad to your thinking process? No? Blind believer, that is all your God requires of you. You are sorted. Your mind is a haven of filth. A little bit of a rambling. I wanted to commend that video Neil deGrasse Tyson is, I think, a nice guy. Mr. Tyson's a nice guy to you. What's he to your God? What are you now to your God? I guess you didn't see the video this one is in, except from Neil Tyson, presentation about intelligent design. You can watch it in the link below. It's a gathering of scientists, secular humanists, and atheists. Dawkins was there, among others. Others like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil lectured. I couldn't find the longer video. But you, as a theist that likes to read and search out a lot of stuff, should be able to search out the original full-length video. What was the gist of it? He spoke on naming rights of how the Middle Eastern nations led the world in science, mathematics, logic, and reason until Islam took hold. And they were thrown back to the Stone Age due to this belief. And the Western world then took the mantle and has made all scientific progress since. What was his warning in this video for the United States? That if we allow the book of your God to become the law of this land, we too will become obsolete. We too will be rethrown into the Dark Ages. He said that cannot be allowed. So you praise the atheist Neil deGrasse Tyson. This is what you ignorant theists get for ignoring your God and going out to praise someone you know absolutely nothing about. So Tyson, at a gathering discussing your God with other like-minded folk, and consequently by his, yours, and your God's definition, Tyson is a true atheist. As I said, he would be heading the anti-golfer movement. And also by your definition, he is a stupid atheist as stupid as you, because by acknowledging the thoughts of this atheist, you've proven you are no Christian. I already knew that, of course, because according to you, there is only one God, yet there are thousands upon thousands of denominations. An impossibility if there were only one God. Thus, there are thousands upon thousands of Christian gods, unless you would say your God is so inept you can't get a simple point across. If not that, then your God is not to blame. People are. Millions have misread what your God wants. That means millions are not practicing Christianity because they are practicing it wrong. You, possibly, for instance, 
unless it is impossible to practice Christianity wrong, that would mean heresy does not exist. Is heresy mentioned in your Christian holy book, your Bible? Then you must accept heresy exists. And unless your God gave only you some magic power to differentiate the false denominations from the only real one, then you are fucked. Can you do that? Differentiate? Of course not. No, that's right. Nothing else matters. All you have to do is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you're golden. Sin doesn't exist. Morality doesn't exist. Heresy doesn't exist. That is why you have no qualms with butchering your own family of dough. Because only Jesus is real. The only thing that makes you a Christian is the acceptance of Jesus. All Christians go to heaven. Murderers, pedophiles, Catholics, Protestants, non-denominationals. You have a free pass to commit all the shit you want. You are a moral, period. Well, since belief is all you need and you are ordered to defend your God through evangelism, torture, and murder, I have four questions for you. I asked Sammy Zatari these questions. Don't know if you've heard of him, but... The sniveling coward ran back under his superstitious rock like the yellow bastard he is. Here they are. One, do you believe your God exists? Or two, do you know your God exists? And three, does your God want humanity to know it exists? Or four, does your God not want humanity to know it exists? I've heard you psychos ought to be ready with a reason for your faith because you are ordered to evangelize. So answer these questions if you dare. Take it easy.